I love people that are difficult to hang out with. Yeah. And sometimes you <laughs> have like in-laws. And, and everybody and said. And, and <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do about that? And uh, so I, I wrote a book. It's like, how do you d deal with people that are difficult? And there's a couple different ways people deal with difficult people. One is they're polite to them. And there's something actually kind of disingenuous about that. I don't think Jesus <laughs> just wants us to be polite with people. Okay. I think he wants us to be authentic. But we need to know enough about ourselves, enough about why we're doing what we're doing, so we can engage people with love. Okay. Right? And so it isn't like just a Bible study on it. It's actually how you do it. Galatians 5, 6 says this. <clears throat> the only thing that matters is faith expressed in love. What a great time to express your faith and love to people that are difficult. Don't do it just with me. I'm low-hanging fruit. I'm a pretty easy guy to get along with. <laughs> yes, you are. Hence the balloons. <laughs> right? But if you want a report card on your faith, see how you're dealing with the people who creep you out. Mm. Uh, and the crazy thing about uh, that is we're the people that creep some people out. Yeah. You know who you are. No pointing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's something about that, like, how do you deal in a sensitive way? Because you might have a clash between what you believe and what somebody else's beliefs. And I love that God doesn't want us to be a bunch of sheriffs. He wants us to know why we believe what we believe. But he did. Jesus didn't come to die on a cross so we'd go bust everybody's chops, but that we would love people. The yeah. only thing that matters, faith expressed in love. But here's the crazy thing. Okay. Jesus doesn't need our help. Right. <laughs> he wants our hearts. Yeah. He wants us to just be his. Okay, you're using a word called creepy, which is kind of a funny word. It's kind of a light <laughs> word. Expand that word base so that we understand it's easy to love Bob Goffs or it's easy to love Lori Crouches. I've been told it's harder to love me, but um, but but the I love you. But the uh, so it's easier, you know. But expand the word base, creepy. So there's 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 people that are creepy. Then there's people that are what what other terms are the ones we're supposed to get 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 over? Well, there's actually uh, some people that are uh, actually toxic to you that yeah. uh, that are actually dangerous to you and I'm so I'm saying you can love somebody uh, at times from a distance okay um, but there'll be people that are just delightfully different than you and, and what we end up doing is distancing ourselves from them because they're different and I just think that that's where the good stuff happens like that's where we go in it and, and it's loving people without an agenda because as soon as you love somebody with an agenda it isn't love anymore it's just another program and I don't want uh, to be another program I just want to be a guy who's trying to follow Jesus yeah. okay okay now you talked you just said that being polite can be disingenuous yeah so where is the line drawn between being polite and really showing the love of Christ if you're where, where's the difference? What a that? great question. I think it's found in authenticity. The first time I spoke down in the deep south, it was probably five or six years ago, and I called Sweet Maria Goff after I yes. said, she said, honey, how did it go? And I said, I think it went great because when I was all done, a lady came up to me and she said, bless your heart. <laughs> She's like, oh, you got shanked. Got like, <laughs> that does not mean awesome. I didn't know. And so a lot of times, if we can just be authentic to people, to say, even to say, you know what, if you could just take about a half a step back, because uh, you're kind of actually in my grill a little bit. But you can do it with a smile mm -hmm. and to say um, there's something. There was actually what I'm learning. It's, it's right out of James, this idea that we can uh, praise God and curse men with the same tongue. Mm -hmm. And I'm a lawyer. I got a fast tongue. And so one of the things I've been <laughs> trying to do is to just be a little bit more mindful about what I'm saying to people that idea of loving difficult people, sometimes it's just be like, watch what you say. Yeah. Okay, sure. let me tell you, uh, this, this will be almost be like therapy for me for a second. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take advantage of Yeah, put you your feet here. up, yeah, okay. get your pillow. Um, this, this, book, when I, it, this book scares me because I don't think I, don't think I can do it. So I want to learn <laughs> from you. Okay, if, if I'm sitting here going, everybody always becoming love in a world full of setbacks and difficult people. So I'm assuming this book means love everyone always. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. I think that well, actually scares what me. Jesus was saying. Okay. <laughs> that scared. Yeah. Look, I don't know how I have, how many other people are honest, but I'm just saying well, that, that does not hard. come naturally. Oh, I me. get it. Me too. Okay. okay. 
Well, well it kind of seems like it comes naturally for you. You seem better at it than me. Well, no, actually, appearances can be deceiving. What I'm trying to do is, uh, is to take these things, these, instead of talking about career, I want to talk about character. Okay. Like, who's the new Bob? And I'm a lawyer. I've been 32 years. I've never lost a case. And it's not because wow. I'm an awesome lawyer. I'm an awesome picker. All right. I just only pick cases nobody could lose. <laughs> You could have a 16-year-old guy up there. He'd be like, he'd win too. Uh, <laughs> and so if we could just be a little pickier about some of the things that we engage in, and then it comes to defining terms, this idea of what's your definition of love. As a matter of fact, I, when my daughter was in high school, I actually wanted her to be a nun, but she's like <laughs> into guys. So I said, when, when the guys uh, ask you to the prom, ask them what your definition of love is. And if they come back and say it's like, Butterflies. I mean, you can get that from bad pizza. <laughs> Love is sacrifice and commitment. And if we get that right, that it involves sacrifice and commitment, when some of the people that are difficult are in your blast radius, to just understand that loving uh, people isn't like a hallmark moment. It's actually, to, it's going to involve some sacrifice and commitment, the kind of inconvenience that's sent like uh, Jesus to die. That's like actually really inconvenient sacrificial love. I want to ask you about opposing counsel. You know your client is on the right side of justice and these opposing counsel people, do you have trouble getting along with opposing counsel? Oh yeah, all the time. But what I do, I don't argue with people. The only time I raise my voice is when I'm yodeling and I've never <laughs> yodeled. And so, because <laughs> it doesn't work, both yeah. yodeling and raising yeah. your voice. And so, but engaging people in love, finding people that creep you out. And you can be self-aware enough to say like everything inside you is like warning, 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 danger near. But one of the things is I'm not trying to like uh, continue to avoid the people uh, that Jesus engaged. Because I realize about that. And listen, I'm right for a living. I win arguments really. You'd know if we were arguing because I'd be winning. <laughs> but I'm, I don't know. But I'm not. Being in the middle of you two, I don't that be know. awesome? Be Come fun. on, yeah. let's do this yeah. thing. Come on. <laughs> but there's something beautiful. I'm not trying to be right anymore. I'm trying to be Jesus. Yeah. And that's going to take a quarter of a twist. You know, if you saw a castle and there's a, down in the basement, there's a wine cellar with all these dusty bottles. And there's somebody giving the bottles a quarter of a twist. Mm -hmm. I never knew the reason they do that is the sediment sticks to the glass. Yeah. And that's how you get the, the wine clear. And I think I've been trying to do that for the longest time in my life. Just give my life a quarter of a twist. For your audience, think of how, how you're living your life, the people that are difficult to you, and how you've been reacting. Give it a quarter of a twist. Mm -hmm. I was actually got a call from a young guy. He said, <laughs> Bob, you've changed my life. I've done a 360 degree change. I'm like, Actually, you're right back where you started. <laughs> I give it a quarter of a twist the other way. <laughs> but it's a little bit at a time. That's how, and some people who love God a lot are so hard on themselves. Yeah. I just want everybody that's just been really hard on them, get a puppy. Yeah. Like literally yeah. find some other. And if you're being really hard on everybody else, get two puppies. Yeah. Like just chill out. Like okay. literally. So if we're thinking about, first of all, uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, we are December 8th, I think. 7th. 7th. Yeah, December 7th. So let's redefine uh, Pearl Harbor Day with Love Day mm -hmm. and, and talk about it. And let's just say that everybody always. So I probably have a tendency. <coughs> so now people are going to search back to times when they've been around me. When I'm around someone that is somebody that I'm creeped out by or, or the radar antennas are up and I really don't want to be around this person. I usually talk fast and I usually dominate the conversation and I, you know, I would, I would kind of do that instead of just saying, hey, you know, I don't know that I'm honest in regard to saying, hey, why don't we just break apart here and, and uh, you go over there and I'll go this way. I'm not quite I would probably nervously go into longer stories. That is what you do. Yeah, yeah. I, I just realized That's that. That's just actually. wonderfully Now I know how to stop you. But what I... <laughs> when the, <laughs> word, up, when the word count goes yeah. up, he'd be like, yeah. I literally kind of nervously talk because in my own family, when there was problems, I felt like I was always the... The peacemaker. So if my mom and dad were fighting, I was usually trying to fix their Your thing. Mom and if, dad fought? 
<laughs> and then, and then <laughs> between, you know, my dad and my brother who were oil and water kind of, I was always trying to, you know, get in the middle. And, and so basically I spent my life being a peacemaker and when I'm in a conflict with somebody in a bigger 